Welcome to the video guys. I wasn't planning on doing a video today as it's my little one's birthday, but a couple of articles caught my attention and I just had to make this video. Everyone will remember how the Ramonas were saying Brexit was going to cost us a fortune, ruin the economy and we'll end up having to bail out banks and every other bit of project fear they spewed out over the last couple of years. Well, it turns out it might well be the other way around as most of us suspected with the EU now likely to face a financial meltdown, which is being called the EU's Financial Chernobyl. Luckily, we won't be any part of having to deal with. The Express is running a couple of articles. The first one we're going to look at is Eurozone on Brink. UK must not delay Brexit talks or risks facing EU Financial Chernobyl. So, we must continue on and get Brexit done, either with some form of trade deal, which I find unlikely, or a straight WTO Brexit. Britain must not delay the end of the transition period to avoid the fallout from a financial Chernobyl in the Eurozone caused by the impact of human malware. A new cross-party think tank, the Centre for Brexit Policy, CBP, has issued the warning over the Eurozone in its first paper, it claims that the human malware situation will transform the Brexit negotiating framework and expose toxic debt within the Eurozone. Former Cabinet Minister Owen Paterson will chair the CBP, backed by a cross-party team of directors, including Labour MP Graham Stringer, DUP MP Sammy Wilson, and former Brexit Party MEP Matthew Patton. So you could definitely call that a cross-party team. Surprise, surprise, not a single Lib Dem in sight, though unless they're somewhere hidden in the background, much like the party. With what is it, 11 MPs if I remember right? So much for the 200 MPs and Joe Swinson Prime Minister, hey? John Longworth, former Director General of the British Chambers of Commerce, will be responsible for day-to-day -day management in conjunction with senior advisor Edgar Miller, also convener of Economists for Free Trade. CBP has concluded that the resulting slump caused by human malware will blow the lid off deep-seated flaws inside the Eurozone setup 20 years ago, which is something we have all seen many people warning about over the years and we kind of saw during the 2008 financial crisis and the austerity measures put on Greece by the Eurozone after they had to be bailed out, thanks of course to the Euro and European Union itself. Once the UK leaves the EU framework at the end of 2020, the financial risks should be lower for the UK itself and the global financial market and it is more likely that the threat can be mitigated by collaborating with other global financial centres. So, while it will still cost us money, hopefully it won't cost us nowhere near as much as it would if we were still part of the European Union. So where are all these Ramonas now that were saying we needed to stay in because otherwise the country will end up bankrupt? It looks like staying in the EU would have bankrupt the country anyway, thanks to the human malware situation that is going on. They warn that a recently published report identified that the foundation of the Eurozone financial regulatory system is based on toxic country debt that is wrongly treated by the Eurozone as riskless liquid sovereign debt. Now, I ain't no financial advisor, but the EU wrongly treats everyone. Take a look at the way they've been treating EU nations since this situation we find ourselves in now began. The impact of the malware crisis on countries such as Italy could be that of a financial Chernobyl, exposing the fatal flaws inside a currency union without the fiscal and monetary powers to cope with a huge drop in output, driving thousands of European firms to the wall. The experts say Britain is well placed to avoid the fallout from such a crisis because it opted to keep the pound and city regulators have long been taking actions that protect the global financial centre based in the UK. And all of these EU nations wondered why we wanted to keep our pound. You know, the great British pound, the currency of the United Kingdom past, present and future. You can take the euro and shove it right up your jacksy. But the UK must still take great care to avoid getting sucked into the looming Eurozone financial crisis via liabilities to the European Investment Bank and other agreements with the EU. This should be a guiding principle in our Brexit negotiations and could potentially protect us and the global financial market from the actions of others. 
Hmm, I wonder who they're talking about the actions of others there, guys. Mr. Longworth said, human malware has produced cause for another round of quantitative easing and will cause multiple pits of bad debt to deepen in southern Europe. It is possible that the whole edifice could be teetering on the brink very soon. The entire economic and political raison d'etat of Germany especially and of France depends on the EU project, and no doubt they will do everything possible to continue to defy gravity which is something the EU looks to have been doing for a long time now, relying on our money to keep themselves afloat. Look at how their budget was going before all this nonsense started. It is not in our interest to see a precipitous collapse. We must, however, put as much distance between us and the Eurozone as possible. It would not be wise to be in the same room with an explosion. No, and while some people would want to see a precipitous collapse, we want to see each nation get out of the EU and keep their financial systems intact, because of course, if one financial system goes down, the domino effect will cause issues for other financial systems around the world, including ours. So while I want to see an end to the EU, I would like to see it in a way that it doesn't affect our European neighbours. Because it doesn't matter how much of a Brexiteer you are, you shouldn't wish ill on the people of Europe, only on the European Commission. The bunch of snivelling shit weasels in there deserve nothing more than our contempt. The real politic of the massive bargaining tool this gives the UK should not be lost on us. Just as the USA saw its opportunity at Bretton Woods at the end of World War II. Mr Patterson added, the period of recovery could be long, but the countries which emerge the strongest will be those which can manage their own laws and affairs to suit their own circumstances. For all the hardships which we now face, we should not lose sight of the fact that regaining those kinds of freedoms was exactly why the UK voted for Brexit in the first place. And we all know that is true. Freedom to make our own way in life should be the right of every single country around the world. Now, we also have this relating to Brexit and saving us from the European Union and the shit show that is likely to follow the human malware situation. Brexit saves UK from colossal EU bailout bill amid fears Brussels will run out of money, which we were discussing earlier and is obviously related to that. Boris Johnson's decision to push through Brexit has saved the UK from a huge financial bill from the EU, amid fears that Brussels could demand billions of euros from member states as part of a huge human malware bailout, which I referred to in the earlier video and is very likely to happen given the situation, especially over in the EU right now with certain countries over there suffering really badly. Italy comes to mind for instance, with Spain slowly catching them up. Not only is the human cost getting bigger, but the financial one also, which will have to be bailed out by the European Union countries. Thankfully, that won't be us. Boris Johnson avoided an economic catastrophe by pushing through Brexit at the right time, according to a former Brexit party candidate. The UK could have been subject to Brussels' demands to contribute a mammoth financial bailout for central banks that have failed during the human malware. Speaking to RT, Mr Ferristein warned that the UK should not pick up any part of the EU's massive bailout fund, and I would have to agree with him. Their bailout should be absolutely nothing to do with us. The government's going to have to take care of UK businesses as it is. He told RT, this is a sign we got out in time. They want to take the European fund to bail out the banks that will fail during this next depression and thought wave that is coming and spend that on human malware and getting the economy back on track. However, they need to have a buffer fund for the banks that will fail and we shouldn't pick up any of the tab for that. Well, that is kind of obvious, let's be honest. There's no way in the world we should be picking up the bill for the European Union. We left technically on January the 31st. No extra money should be going to Brussels, that is for sure. Unless, of course, the EU breaks up, then the government can make decisions on helping neighbouring countries that are allies with us, if it's mutually beneficial to us and them, of course. As for the EU, no, not having it. We shouldn't be paying any money to them. We shouldn't really be paying any money to any other country in this situation. 
but to an individual European nation who is a friend and ally and no longer a member of the European Union, if this situation was to spell the end of it, then I could see why that would be done. But otherwise, no. This comes as Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte demanded that the EU makes use of its £500 billion fund. And I can completely understand why the Italian Prime Minister is saying that. Look at the situation over there, that it seems the EU has completely left them to their own devices, and possibly even helped exacerbate the situation by not closing the borders sooner, much like the UK government did here, still allowing people through unchecked to bring the malware in. As soon as it was announced in China, they should have closed the borders, end of story. That is something we will have to hold the government to account to once this crisis is over. Earlier this week, the European Central Bank has launched an emergency £700 billion package to ease the impact of the human malware situation. This will see the ECB buy government and company debt across the Eurozone, including that of troubled Greece and Italy. ECB boss Christine Lagarde tweeted, There are no limits to its commitment to the Euro, which should be an ominous sign for any one of the 27 EU nations that are going to have to foot this bill because their commitment has no limits, meaning there's no limit to the amount of money they are going to try and take from these member states. We cannot be any part of that. Brussels has also relaxed budget rules for the first time and allowed member states to redirect money allocated for other purposes to fight the malware. However, EU officials have also stressed that Brussels could run out of money, after admitting there are limits to how much financial support can be made available directly from the EU budget, which is approaching the end of a seven-year cycle, and they can't sort out the next one, as I've said a couple of times in this video and in previous videos before. So that there pretty much says it all, don't it? The EU could be well in the shit with this situation, and could well actually spell the end of it, as the first article was pointing out. With this one stating, we shouldn't be paying any money to them. And there it finishes up talking about how the EU failed to agree a new budget earlier this year, leaving the current funds drained and at risk. So essentially, be prepared for these EU nations to be literally left on their lonesome by Brussels if and when it runs out of money. I guess time will tell. All I know for sure is we shouldn't be paying any money to them. That is a fact. Now before I go, I've started doing live streams and uploading gaming content on my second channel. If you would like to come and join me for a live stream to chat in real time, have an interest in gaming related content on YouTube, or just want to follow me over there because you are a legend, the link will be down in the video description below and as a pinned comment. I hope to see you all there. Now as always, before I go, I want to thank our PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube members for supporting the channel along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies Mr. Verhofstadt against their empires <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving and it doesn't matter which language you use we are going and we are glad to be going we're off <laughs>